really this stuff snowballs. So if you don't keep up, it's it's bad news. And so I have a very strict policy on homework submissions. If you're if you can't get it done on time and you hand it in late, you can hand it in with the next assignment for half credit. After that, none because it, there's, it just piles up. It's just, there's too much. Okay, yeah. Would you, if we're handing it in late, would you rather us hand it in with the next one or any days before the next one? It doesn't matter because I will collect it with the next one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, just a word of warning because, you know, uh, this, it, this stuff, the, stu the, the actual programming that we're doing so far is pretty easy. But once we get into the data structures, it's going to get, it'll, it'll snowball. And so that's, I just want to make that clear. Okay, so at the end of class last time, we were looking at um, the safe array uh, because we know we saw that, we did a demo and we showed that in C++, if you have just a regular C++ array, it allows you to write outside the bounds of the array. And so um, we did a little demo to show that that was possible and then we demoed this safe array that does not allow the programmer to, to execute a program in which the um, reference to the array is outside the bounds of the array. And instead what it does is it, it aborts the program with an error message. That's the whole purpose of array T. So what I want to do before we go on to the next topic is let's do a little code walk through here of the array T and we'll actually see the code that does that because this is part of our library. This is part of our DP4DS distribution library. Okay, so now in figure 2.11 is the UML class diagram. And um, we have the abstract type is ASEQ, which stands for abstract sequence. And these little letters in the dashed rectangles on the upper right corner, those are the template parameters. All right? And we talked about what the concept of a template was. It is that the idea is that if you write a library that contains a data structure that stores data, the question is, what should you use for the type of the data when you write your library? Should you write a data structure that stores integers? Or should you write a data structure that stores doubles? Or should you write a data, stru a data structure that stores, I don't know, strings? You see? So you see then that if you're going to provide a library for a user to store some kind of data structure, it would be really uh, wasteful to have to write a separate data structure for each one of those types. You see the idea there? So what you do, what, what, what um, uh, C++ plus templates allow you to do is they allow you to write a library for a data structure that stores a general type. And so what happens is when you did, when you did your array T and you, uh, you compiled it and you ran it, I think it was with an array of doubles, right? So in that particular case, the array T, that T is the, like the formal parameter and the actual parameter is double. And if you wanted it to store an array of ints, the formal parameter would be T but the actual parameter would be int, and you would set it up as, a, as an array of ints. But you could set it up, at, we're actually gonna have it in the future, we're gonna use array t to store an array of lists. See, so you can have it be an array of anything. And does everybody see the, the, the general concept? That's the idea. Any questions about that? It's so that you can write a data structure to store a collection of any type you want, and that and that type is determined when the user of the library supplies the actual parameter, in other words, it supplies the type for that, uh, for that library, All right? And now look at the four things that we have for the abstract sequence. We have a seek, so that is a function that has the same name as the class, so that must be a what? Constructor. It doesn't return any type, so that's the constructor. And now, what is, do you, have you guys done operator overloading? Have you done operator plus, operator minus, operator? Okay, well, anyway, the, here what we're doing is we are defining operator square bracket. And so what we're doing is we are overloading the subscript operator for arrays. 
so that the user of the array can just have, have use the subscript notation to access uh, elements of the array. Okay, so we are going to redefine, we're re, we are going to redefine the subscript operator. And we have two versions of it, that's some C++ stuff, you have to have a constant version and a non-constant version. And then there's also a method called cap, and what did we say cap stood for? Capacity. capacity, yeah, so that's the capacity, which is different from, the capacity is how much it can store, that's different from the size or the length, which what it, is, what it actually is storing, how much it is storing. Okay, and so we have a function that returns the capacity of the array. And now look, in a, let's focus on array T. What are, how many attributes does array T have? It has two, and what are their names? Underscore data and underscore cap. Now what is the type of underscore cap? It's an int. What is the type of underscore data? T star. Now what do we say T was? It could be a type. Yeah, that's the formal parameter like quote, the, air quotes, quote, <laughs> formal, formal parameter for the type T. So you can think of, of underscore data as either being an int star or a double star or a string star. You see a pointer to a type. But now look you guys. This underscore data, it looks like a pointer to a type, but what did we just see just a few days ago? That pointers can be considered to be what? Yeah, a pointer, but, what a, but what, there's a close association between a pointer and a what? Array. And an array, and how are they related? The pointer is the what? Points to the what? The first, the first element of the array. Underscore data is actually an array. Are you with me? Underscore data, we'll see, is actually an array. All right? So that's the idea behind it. And then here it, 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 um, it, it implements these. So now let's do a little code walkthrough and see, and see how this works. In figure 2.12, this is the abstract sequence class for a safe array. And here this is just the C++ code that corresponds to the, to the um, UML diagram that we just saw. Okay, so you've got um, the uh, operator overloading, the square bracket operator, you have a constructor, you have a destructor, and you have this vert, uh, uh, int cap. Now what was this, so let's take a look at int cap. What does this virtual equal zero mean in C++? What's the C++ terminology for virtual and then equal zero? That's called what? Pure virtual. Yeah, in C++ terminology, abstract in UML terminology, okay? And, uh, and now, and we'll, we'll see how these operators, how the operator square bracket is implemented in, um, in array T. <laughs> now, so in figure 2.14, here's the code for the array T. Now check this out, you guys. You remember the, what were the two attributes of an array T? underscore data and underscore cap. And C cap here, you see, you see the C++ code, cap is an int. All right, and what does it say underscore data is? A, a, a pointer to a type T. But that is actually an array because look, if, you, um, if we come over here to the next slide, we can see the constructor. Let's take a look at the constructor. Now what, uh, so we have a precondition for the constructor, and now what does the constructor do? It says underscore data gets what? New what? T. T square bracket cap. So you see there is underscore data is being allocated as an array with a subscript with a size cap, what the user entered. Like if you put 10, that would be the capacity of 10. Does everybody see that? And then underscore cap gets cap. So the, a the attribute gets the cap, which is the uh, parameter of the constructor. All right, so you see we are treating underscore data as if it were an array, because it really is an array. Is everybody clear? So an array can be a pointer itself? Yeah, like we saw before. And if, if, you, if you have the name of the array without the square bracket, it is a pointer to the first element of the array. 
And this is an example of that <laughs> correspondence between pointers and arrays in C okay. and C++. Is there, is, are we clear? Is everybody good with this? Ask away, yeah. So when you have like an array and you have like, when you just have it an array, it points to the first one. If you have an, like an array and like three, will that point to the third? It's like a Well, square three. brackets yeah. sub three, yeah, that will that point to the third, third. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, you guys, in figure 2.14, let's take a look. Here is, the here is the implementation of cap. Cap is a function. And look, it's a one-liner. What does it do? It just does what? Just returns the capacity that is stored as part of the object of, of, a, of an array T. Is everybody clear? Okay, so so you you will use this in future projects. You will you will need to query the capacity of the array. You can use this cap. Yeah, maybe I, I let me give an answer and I, let's see if this is what your question was. Yeah, that's, right. okay. that's all right. Okay, so the purpose of cap is of the cap function is so that if you as a programmer are using the library and you want to query the capacity of the array, you can do that, right. and so it, it allows. This is a way for if the programmer needs to know what the capacity is of, a, of an array, the user can query that and it, can, and it will return it. Does that answer your question? No problem. Are, is everybody good? Okay, now you guys, here's where it actually happens in figure 2.15. Check this out. Now you guys experienced this whenever you ran the array T and you did something out of bounds. You, what came out? An error message in red, right? Now look at this. This is operator square bracket, all right? Operator square bracket. And let's ignore for, the, for a minute the implementation of the precondition. And let's see, this is a one-liner. What does it do? It returns what? Underscore data sub i. Underscore data sub i. What this means is that if you have, you can say, if you, if you have an array called my array, and you say, and you say um, I gets my array sub, I don't know, like sub six, like this, and my array is an array T. When the six that you put in here, the six that you put in here corresponds to that int i. Do you see what I mean? The six that you put in the bracket when you use the array corresponds to the int i formal parameter. Are you with me? And then this code does what? Returns what? Underscore data sub i, that element in the unsafe array that it has inside of it. Do you see? But what does it do first? Before it does that, what does it do? It checks. If uh, less than i0, it checks that it's in bounds. And if it's not in bounds, what does it do? Array t, index out of bounds. You guys experienced it. You read the error message, right, when you did your, your homework. You see? There it is. There is checking. There's where it's safe. That's what makes it safe. Yeah? Can you explain what throw minus one does exactly? Say what? What? Throw minus one. Oh, that is a C++, uh, th that, yes, that is a C++ that makes the program abort. Okay. Yeah, it makes the program abort. So throw a keyword. Yeah. Yes, throw is a keyword. And we had some example, this is not typically the way it's used, we had an example on a slide previously that showed how you use it with a throw catch, there's a catch part to the phrase, you can look that up, that's a C++ thing. Yeah. Does everybody see the key idea here is that when you put whatever you put in square bracket here corresponds to the int i there and, and it returns underscore data sub i. But it checks it first and gives you an error message. All right? So is everybody clear on this? So that's the, and then here's read stream and write stream and I'll let you look that over. Okay? Now. There's another, uh, the next project that you're going to have to install on your DP4DS distribution are the vectors. Now, there is, and let me say that all commercial libraries um, have a class 
call usually have a vector class. They ha have vector classes. Okay. Now, and so a vector class is similar to an array. But here's the thing. You know how ever when, whenever we did the classic array or when we did array T, what was the first prompt? The first prompt, the, the pro main program asked you to do what? Enter the what? Capacity. The capacity. And you had to enter like a number, like 10 or whatever. And whatever number you entered, that's the capacity. And once you enter that and you ran the program, that was it. You know, if you wanted more, you'd have to rerun the program and enter the capacity again and do it. Are you with me? Now, wouldn't it be lovely if you had a data structure where you didn't have to enter the capacity, but instead, automatically, behind the scenes, it would do what? Increase the capacity. Grow. Increase, in order to do what? Fill whatever you wanted. Boom, boom, boom. Automatically behind the scenes. That's the idea of a vector in programming terminology. Okay? So what are the, what's the difference? It's similar to an array, so you can subscript it. But what happens is behind the scenes, the capacity increases automatically. And, and furthermore, there is, and so you can subscript it, you know, like sub three, sub four, whatever, just like. But there are also two additional operations. There is an insert operation that shifts the current values to the right to stick them in. So like if you have a vector like this, and you have, a, you have numbers here like, like 10, 50, 40, 30, um, 15, all right? And if you want to insert, if you want to insert an element here, guess what it will do for you automatically? It'll move this one to here, it'll move this one to here, it'll move this one to here, and then it'll put this one here. Pretty slick, huh? Okay, so that's uh, another operation that's available for a vector. And then conversely, if the remove operation, if you want to remove an element in a, in a vector, it, and it removes it, it'll go bloop, 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 and shift them all to take up the place of the one that you removed. So that they'll be all, all so that all the values will be together. Is everybody clear about, on that? So I have a little sequence here. What the vector does in our DP4, DP4DS distribution, what it does is it initializes the vector to have a size of one, a capacity of one. All right? It initializes it to have a capacity of one. And here, when you do, and let's suppose that V is the vector. So if you, if you say V dot insert 0 comma 1, that insert, sorry, 0 comma 10, that inserts 10 at V sub 0. So this is the picture of what it looks like in part A. Are you with me? And then what happens is, if you say V dot insert 0 comma 20, what it does is it, it inserts it at 10, sorry, it inserts it at 0 where the 10 is, but it wants to shift the 10 over. But the capacity is only 1. So what does it do with the capacity? It doubles it. Always it? it always doubles it. So adding one Why? variable above capacity doubles the size. Doubles, yes. In anticipation that if you're going to go one over, you're probably going to go two or three or four over. See? Yes. Okay. Did you hear that question? The question was if you did v sub zero equals v sub v sub zero gets thirty, then the ten would just be replaced by the thirty. And so it would act just like an array that way. But that's doing v sub zero gets, not insert, not v dot insert. Yeah. So insert is shifts it, but the subscript one. Just so what potentially if you said like, let's insert another one. So now we have four capacity. Yeah. Here, let's 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 go through. Let's go. So here the capacity is doubled, right? Hold 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 your question. It might be answered here. So now what happens is if you do v dot insert zero thirty, it shifts the twenty. And well, first of all. It's at the capacity, so it doubles it to four. If the capacity is not full, it doesn't have to double. Oh, oh, it knows. It knows. Oh yes. That was like that. Oh, that was your question. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. No, no. It doesn't always double every time you insert. It only doubles if you're at the capacity. In fact, right now, what would happen if you did another insert? It would not double. It would not double. Okay. So here, insert. Now look. 140, so insert 40 at 1. Notice the 20 and 10 shifted over. The 40 got put in there, and it didn't have to double. Yeah. Okay, so if you do V dot, v dot insert 450, then um, it's, it, in, it inserts it at 4, but it has to, the capacity is doubled. And then um, if, when you insert uh, 60 at location 2, it doesn't have to double the capacity. All right? Is everybody clear? All right. So now let's do a, let's do a demo. Okay. So now here's our demo, and here we have the vector um, t class that we did the code walk through uh, before. And so let's so we right click and do run. And so here is our prompt. Okay. So if we do w for right we see it gives us an empty vector, right? So now let's do, um, let's do I for insert. Now what did we, what did we insert um, 10 at location zero? And now if we write, you see it's 10. And now see, this allows us to query the cap and the size. So let's do C for cap. The capacity is one and S for size. The size is one, right? Now, and then let's, let's insert um, 20 at location 0. All right, and now if we write it, we have 20 and 10, and we see that if we do cap, the capacity is 2, and S, the size is 2 also. And then, what did we do? Let's insert, oh, and let's write it. Oh, we already wrote it. Well, there, we'll write it again, 2010. So now let's insert, um, let's insert 50 at position 1, at location 1. And so now if we do, if we write it, see the 10 got uh, shifted over. And now what will happen if we do C for cap? Any predictions? Yes. Capacity is 4 and uh, S for the size is 3. Now what was the question that you had? Uh, you wanted to know if we could do um, set. Oh, sorry. Yeah, here, let, let's... Oh, no, 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 yeah. Um, 10 at um, location 0 and then 50 at address 10. Oh, if we try to insert something at address 10, it, will, it should crash, I, I would think. Um, so let's insert, insert what integer value? Let's make it 50. And the capacity is 4, so let's try to put it at like 6, right, which is way outside. And here, uh, here it, it crashed outside. Okay, but anyway, that was the demo. Oh, so these like insert and like all those things that we had, the options you had, those are things that like you programmed, not that are like does there is there something that a vector like that already exists? There that yeah, that's a good question. Is there like a vector that already exists, or is this something that we programmed? That very good question. Here's the thing: as a programmer, if you use some a library that is supplied to you by the language or by the development system, then typically vector is, is supplied and is all you have to do is use it. In this course, what we are doing is because this is about data structures, we are implementing all of this stuff ourselves. Okay. And so this vector is one of the projects that's in the DP4DS distribution. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, your assignment, your next programming assignment is going to be to do what? Yeah, there's parts of this. I showed you a completed a, a completed one, but if you try to run this like this, it it'll it'll crash because you're going to have to finish it. Okay. So now let's go through the code and see what the code looks like and what you'll have to do okay. in order to to get the vector implemented. So does everybody understand what vectors do? And now here comes your programming assignment. So let's take a look at this vector implementation in Figure 2.18. So, because this is vector t, the precondition is that the parameter t is not a pointer type, all right? And uh, so this is going to be similar to like, it's the same idea as the um, array t, only this time it's going to have this automatically, automatic doubling feature to it. Are you with me? 
So uh, what are the attributes of this of vector t? It's this t star data. So what do you suppose underscore data is? It looks like it's a pointer to a type t, but it's actually a what? It's actually an array. Okay, and here we have, it. now remember we could query the capacity and the size. So what attributes do we have here? Underscore cap for the capacity, which is an int, and an underscore size, which is an int. Is everybody good? Okay, and when we query those, it just, it just re 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 returns those. But now look at, look at what we have private. What, do we, what private method do we have here? Void what? Double capacity. So this is what gets called internally. So this is not this double capacity. Notice that on the main program it didn't say double the capacity, you know, D, let the user double the capacity. This happens behind the scenes automatically. Is everybody clear? That's why it's private. This is private. Okay? Private access. And look, here is the code for double capacity, which happens behind the scenes. Here, again, still figure 2.18. Check it out. So here it's void vector t, and what is this t in, in angle brackets? That's the, this is like the formal parameter of the type, so this would be a vector int or a vector, I think we did int, right? So the actual parameter was an int, t is the formal parameter like for the, for the template, template parameter, right? And it's called double capacity. Now what's the very first thing that it does? Underscore cap what? <coughs> Times gets two, which is equivalent to what? Yes, cap gets cap times. cap times two. Are you with me? And now look what it has to do. It has to do T star new dat gets new T what? Sub underscore cap. So what does that do? That allocates what? Storage. Storage from the heap, twice as big, because we multiplied underscore cap by two. So this allocates an array twice as big, and, but then what does it have to do? It has to copy over from the small one, are you with me? Copy over from the small one to this new one, and then what does it have to do? So that, that's the four int k gets zero, k less than size, k plus plus, new dat sub k gets underscore dat sub k, so it copies them over, and then what does it have to do? And then underscore dat gets what? New dat. So that is a pointer assignment because it, the, the first element of the array of the old, you know, what pointed to the first element of the old one now points to the first element of the new one. Yeah, now does everybody see it? Is everybody, you should understand every line of this. This, this code, there's no, there's no obscure anything on this. This code, yeah, question? So without the last line, the new dat would just kind of be hanging around in the heap unaccessible? Well, the next time you, yeah, you would be accessing the old. But wouldn't that be, or, oh, you'd just be accessing. You'd be actually, you'd still be accessing the old one. Yeah, the question is, if underscore dat gets new dat was left out, then, the attribute of that array would be still pointing to the old one. Right, which is somewhere else. Which is somewhere else, yeah, yeah. Is that, is that, are we good? Yeah. Um, so you, in the for loop it says uh, k is less than uh, underscore size. Wouldn't the old array that you had before, couldn't that also have a size? So with yeah, it does, it does. But it, it is this, it is, it is this size, it is this underscore size. This is the underscore size of the old array, and it doesn't change. Oh. It doesn't change. The size does not change when you double when when you call double capacity. Is everybody? Is everybody? Is, yeah. Are you with me? Okay. Now look, you guys. So here's the implementation of cap. Okay. So int cap, and we just return underscore cap. Here's the implementation of size. Int size, we just return underscore size. All right. And here's the constructor, so I've done the constructor for you. Notice, remember what we said that it gets initialized to? An array of size what? Or capacity what? One, so here it is. Data gets new t1. Underscore cap gets one. Underscore size gets zero. All right, so there's, there's this. And now what about insert and remove? Okay, so here are, here's the... Um, so we have actually, this, these are the specifications for append, insert, and remove. 
And here's the code for append. So append puts it at the end, right? So look what it does. If underscore size equals equals what? Capacity. So that means it's full. So what do we call internally? Double the capacity. And then what do we do? Now what is this size plus plus? You're adding. You're adding one to size. Now are you returning the incremented one or not in the square brackets? No, you're not returning. Yeah, you're not returning. It's after it doesn't sound. Right. Okay. And that gets E, and E is E is what's in the square bracket is is what's is what's in the append. All right, the parameter in the append. Okay, so in figure 2.21 here, we have the code for the for doing the square bracket, like just like we did with the array T. Okay, so we're it's operator square bracket. And, oh, sorry. So <coughs> this this is the uh, output operator, and this is the input operator. In figure in figure uh, 220. Um, these are the preconditions and postconditions for insert and remove, and those are exercises for the student. All right? So now, let me see, when is this assignment due? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Okay, good deal. See you next time.